Hey what's up you guys, it's Nicholas Lionrider and in today's video I am going to be going over all of the brand new changes and updates to Mystic Aquarium. So the aquarium has changed a lot since the last time I went there and so I thought, you know what, I think we have enough news, I could probably do an update video kind of like I do for Roger Williams. So I hope you guys enjoy today's video and so without further ado, let's get started. So the first and biggest update to the aquarium are the brand new additions. So the aquarium just acquired five brand new juvenile belugas. So these belugas that are unnamed were brought over from Marineland in Canada and they will be joining the three existing beluga whales, Keela, Natasha, and Juno. So the aquarium now has a total of eight belugas, which I have already kind of voiced my concern about. I don't think they should have had eight belugas in that habitat, however, um, they did already go through with the acquisition, so all we can do is kind of hope that Mystic Aquarium is definitely giving them much better care than they did in their previous living conditions, which I'm sure they will. So the belugas are very young, so they are a lot smaller than the existing belugas that were at the aquarium and they are kind of just getting used to being at the aquarium in the bigger tank. So they do have access to the big outdoor pool. However, they were in the, uh, the kind of training area slash quarantine pool for the first few weeks they were at the park. So they are kind of a little hesitant to venture outside. And so the trainers have been doing very, very, very frequent training sessions to uh, kind of reward them for going out into the pool, maybe seeing the guests interact with the other belugas, just kind of getting them further acclimated to the uh, aquarium so that they're not always going to be uh, in the training area, of course. And I have seen they have been making excellent progress. They definitely feel comfortable enough to um, go out into the main pool so long as there's a reward at the end of it. But I think over time, as they get used to the aquarium and the other belugas and stuff, they're going to feel more and more comfortable going into the rest of the aquarium to explore. But with that being said, we have other news on the Arctic coast and that is in the seal enclosure. So our seal enclosure is rather large. It actually has several different types of pinnipeds in it. It has Atlantic Harbor seals, Pacific spotted seals, and Northern fur seals. However, periodically we will sometimes get some rescue seals from uh, the wild and they will be brought to the aquarium and then kind of um, mixed in with these general um, other seals and stuff uh, until they can be rehabilitated and then released back into the wild. So the last time I went we actually had a ribbon seal in the, uh, the pool and that has been since released into the wild and so when I talked to one of the uh, I guess keepers he was mentioning that they just got a gray seal so I'm not positive if that is actually true I haven't seen the gray seal but they did say that we will be having a gray seal for a short period of time, which is very exciting because if you want to go and see pinnipeds out of any aquarium, I think Mystic Aquarium has you down because we have a very, very large pinniped collection with, okay, spotted seals, harbor seals, stellar sea lions, northern fur seals, California sea lions, and then usually the kind of extra, you know, ribbon seal slash maybe gray seal, maybe at one time we even had walrus. So you don't really know what we're, we're going to get, but definitely come by Mystic Aquarium if you are interested in pinnipeds. <laughs> so uh, speaking of pinnipeds, let's talk about the stellar sea lion. So they are my favorite animal at the aquarium by far. They are massive. So Mystic Aquarium is one of two holders of stellar sea lions in North America and they are massive. They are basically like the size of a walrus give or take but they're sea lions so they're very very large um, and they make giant roaring sounds like it is very very cool to like hear them and see them in action. 
and uh, I was definitely hearing them roar because they could, they are so intelligent that they could literally hear the cooks in the kitchen preparing food before they were even there. So they were actually going up to um, their kind of like bars or whatever, like the their feeding door, and they were just waiting outside for the kitchen door to open. And so it's very interesting to see how intelligent they are. And um, yeah, so definitely my favorite sea lion slash animal at the aquarium. So moving over to the wetlands trail. So the wetlands trail is always known for the local wildlife of, uh, you know, the New England area. And so normally they have a lot of frogs and turtles. However, due to the season, it's actually tadpole season. So if you look into the water, you're going to see a ton, hundreds, maybe even thousands of tadpoles in the lake area, which is always uh, really interesting. You're not going to see a ton of frog, like a, adult frogs or anything. You will catch a couple of uh, turtles. I actually saw one of them on one of the floating alligators. Um, which I will mention, the alligators are fake. This is a, a kind of point of contention that a lot of people have. They're so eerily realistic, a lot of people think they're fake. Or uh, they think they're real, but they're they're 100% fake. They're just like little floating platforms. But they look eerily realistic. And so the turtles like to hang out on those. And people are like, oh my god, they're going to get eaten. But no, they're just totally fake. Um, and so moving over to the last of the outdoor habitats, we have the penguins, which it was also feeding time. So all of the penguins get hand fed. We have African penguins on exhibit. And uh, yeah, they just all gather around and just get fed. <laughs> like it's, there's not much to say. I love penguins as well. I think penguins are, uh, I, I don't think Planet Zoo did them entirely justice in particular for that audience that likes, you know, my Planet Zoo content. I don't think they were done justice because as you can see, like with the footage, they are a lot shorter and more squat and they waddle a lot differently. But um, I, I, I love them. I love African penguins. And they are, uh, again, one of my favorite animals at the aquarium. And so bringing it over to updates on the main gallery. So the actual aquarium portion of the aquarium. So the main gallery is where all of your fish tanks are going to be located. And that's inside of the main building. And so while there isn't a ton of news updates on most of the exhibits, I will say that the octopus exhibit was under construction. It's kind of interesting though, the octopus was technically visible. The lights were off in its enclosure though, so that was a little bit odd. But um, the octopus was in it. You could see one of its tentacles like on the side and there was still water in it and there was still like uh, a couple of like the basic starfish and sea urchins and stuff that usually are in their habitat. But um, the actual lights were off, which was really interesting. Which speaking of lighting, I could kind of mention this a little bit. So this trip was a, a dual trip. I wanted to record obviously the news updates and I wanted to see the new belugas and the different changes at the aquarium. But I was also going on a billboard hunt for Planet Zoo. So obviously a lot of people know about my Mystic Aquarium series on uh, in Planet Zoo, my recreation series. And so I wanna get back into doing the actual series. And so the next step is to do the in indoor main gallery. So I was collecting billboards for everything. And when I was trying to get to a couple of the tanks, for instance, the California sea lions, the lights were being messed with. And I think they were playing with the lighting for the shows. And we will be getting to that in a little bit, uh, uh, in, in a little bit, but they were messing with the light. So it was kind of interesting. It was very, very dark. You couldn't really see into the sea lion enclosure all that well, but they had a couple of like strobe lights that were going off every few minutes, which you could see like little glimpses of the sea lions, which was really interesting. But past that, the main gallery hasn't changed a ton. Um, it's very, very similar to what it was. It was. It's about 30 fish tanks, give or take, and the habitats have always kind of been very consistent for the last, I'd say, five or six years. No major changes have happened to that. Which I guess now we can actually talk about these sea lions. So if you were to head outside again, uh, sea lion shows will be returning. So they're technically kind of already 
in action, but officially Sea Lion shows are going to be returning on July 1st. So if you are someone who is planning on going to the aquarium after next week, you will have access to the full on uh, Sea Lion shows. So now that every, every pretty much everywhere in the United States has kind of loosened up restrictions on Corona, um, the aquarium is finally getting back to their normal routine of doing regular Sea Lion shows periodically throughout the day. And so they are officially returning on July 1st. However, uh, on this particular day, they were doing some of the pre-shows. So they were kind of training sessions that weren't really a direct sea lion show, but you go into the theater, you watch the sea lions do tricks. It's a sea lion show without being called a sea lion show. So um, that was very exciting. I'm actually going to be uploading that separately on my channel uh, if anyone wants to see the entire training session. Uh, it's about uh, 13 minutes long. I will be posting that as well. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. I'll have a link in the description. So the last update that I wanted to mention is just kind of a general update because I was a little bit upset by this as a member of the aquarium was uh, Jurassic Giants, their animatronic dinosaur habitat now costs money. And that wasn't the case before. It used to be um, a thing that was included with admission and certainly admission for members. However, now it costs $5 to enter for members and $11 for general guests. And that's per person. So um, it can be very expensive to look at some animatronic dinosaurs that, again, this time three months ago was free. So I, I definitely think that's a bit of a... It's not not the greatest thing. I couldn't get any footage because, spoiler, I wasn't paying for, you know, my entire party to go look at some dinosaurs I've already seen. And unfortunately, I used to think it was a worthwhile exhibit when they had alligators. They had a whole alligator exhibit. They took that out, and so now it's basically you're paying a lot of money. If you have little kids, it's one thing you get to see the dinosaurs and stuff. But if you're an adult or just uh, someone who likes seeing actual animals, the only thing inside are a couple of uh, a couple of frog exhibits and a couple of miscellaneous snake exhibits. Um, but it, there's not many. There's less than probably ten total real exhibits inside of that, which weigh the benefits. Maybe you want to see it uh, once in your life, but I, I don't think it's a thing that you must do every single time, especially when they're charging you every single time you want to go see it. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I, uh, I had a very good time at the aquarium. I spent a lot longer there than I normally do um, during this last visit. So hopefully, like I said, once those sea lion shows are in full action, you know, I think Mystic Aquarium will be at full aquariumness it'll be the full experience that people remember before the the corona time so i hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and if you did like comment and subscribe like i said check out that other video that's going out on my channel it's going to be the entire training session for the sea lions and uh yeah so thank you all for watching and i will see you next time